Good afternoon. This is just the second part of my report. And just for us to be contextualized with regard to what CHED is doing in order to help uh, higher education institutions, I'd like to share what took place last August 12 to 14. We're in CHED Region 4A Calabarzon organized a three-day webinar workshop on HEIs migrating to the new normal, faculty training on flexible learning, wherein they invited the school administrators and professors. Okay, we start with an opening program, prayer, national anthem, um, hymn, and then the presentation of the participants. And our college department participated in this seminar workshop. Okay, we also had the welcome remarks by Dr. Eden Calio, the Vice President for Academic Affairs, followed by the keynote address by Dr. Mario Briones, University President of uh, Laguna State Polytechnic University here in Laguna, Rationale by Dr. Amelia Biliete, Director, CHED Region 4A, okay, followed by the webinar house rules introduction to our resource speakers. For, our, um, uh, for the first day, the topic was Essentials of E-Learning and Designing an E-Learning Course by uh, our resource speaker was Professor Nino Naldoza, a Director, Institute of Knowledge Management at Philippine Normal University. The moderator was Dr. Albert Yazon, Director of CIBQA. For the second day, our input was on assessment in e-learning. Our resource speaker was Dr. Alberto Yazon, the Director of Curriculum and Instruction and Development and Quality Assurance. And our moderator was Dr. Enrico Rivano, Chairperson, CIDQA Santa Cruz Campus. And for the third day, we had the clustered workshop, developing an e-learning course. And our moderator was Dr. Karen Manaig, Chairperson, CIDQA Las Bagas Campus. Okay, so may I just... Uh... So during that said uh, webinar, okay, actually they uh, talk about assessments, okay, the basic concepts on test measurement, assessment, and evaluation, okay. So because uh, this is in view of coming up with an assessment plan for HEIs, okay, the modes of assessment, traditional, alternative, performance-based, and portfolio, okay, and uh, they explain the purpose of assessing students, okay. Assessment Pyramid by Row 2012. Assessment for Learning, okay, for the formative and as well as for the summative assessment. Okay, they also presented the principles of high quality assessment, okay, uh, clear and appropriate learning targets. The learning targets should be clearly stated, specific and centers on what is truly important, okay. And for the learning targets also, which includes the knowledge, reasoning, skills, products, and effective disposition. Okay, it also included the learning targets and their appropriate assessment methods. And then assessment standards for teachers, okay, what assessment standards should be, should the teacher attain when assessing learning in flexible uh, modalities, okay. Assessment standards, okay, source is Philippine Professional Standard for Teachers or PPST. So domain five, assessment and reporting now under strand 5.1, design, selection, organization, and utilization of assessment strategies. Strand 5.2, monitoring and evaluation of learner progress and achievement. Standard 5.3, feedback to improve learning. Standard 5.4, communication of learner needs, progress, and achievement to key stakeholders. And strand 5.5, use of assessment data to enhance teaching and learning practices and programs, okay? And CHED uh, Region 4A also provided sample analytic uh, rubric, okay, for homework completion no, for our students, like assessment completion, accuracy, legibility, following instructions, peer review, assess, uh, assignment responsiveness, reading application, discussion responsiveness, posting timeliness, posting quality and discussion protocols. Okay, uh, comprehension form, grammar, detail format. So these are the sample analytic rubric. Okay, and they also provided a sample analytic participation rubric. Okay, so uh, exemplary, okay, level three, second le level two, and level one. 
Okay, and they also provided sample assessment plan. Okay, per year level, no? it depends on the course. Okay, and how do we assess uh, in remote learning? Okay, so the techniques and tools in assessing and learning. Okay, so the traditional. Okay, compared to the performance based or the portfolio. Okay, so um, in this time of new normal, now we are being asked not to. Uh, to really come up with the out of the box, okay, uh, form of assessing our students can be online assessments, okay, for those who are just like for example in our college department, um, since our students are capable of have, of assessing or having a stable Wi-Fi connection, we are into online assessments. Okay, so how do we assess in remote learning? Okay, the knowledge, reasoning, skills, products affect or disposition okay and what makes grading students centered in remote learning okay so actually the grading system according to types of comparisons of achievement academic achievement uh, there are two types the norm reference and the criterion reference okay so if, if it's norm reference student compared with other students being assessed and the advantage is that there is a cut of score depending on the difficulty of the graded assessment and the performance of all students who have been assessed. And the disadvantage is it does not recognize ability of the students as grade is dependent on their position when compared with the performance of other students assessed. It also does not motivate improvement in instruction. Compared to the criteria reference, students compared with established standards, the advantage is that students could get high grades when they exert sufficient effort to meet the cut of score or the criterion for success. It also motivates improvement in instruction. Okay, but the disadvantage is meeting of the cut of score or criterion of success is not easy, especially when assessments are difficult. Okay, so for the grading system, according to number of levels of grades, okay, the areas of comparison, accuracy in describing level of achievement, level of motivation to study hard, is in grading level of anxiety of the students, okay? And there are four levels, can be the checklist, pass-fail grades, categorical grades, or numerical grades in percentage, okay? And for the techniques in keeping the integrity of grades, because since the students, no, they are in the comforts of their homes, no, um, there is the, um, the issue of academic dishonesty. Okay, so what are the techniques in keeping the integrity of grades? Okay, so Ched uh, shared it with us. Okay, so since there is an element of doubt in the authenticity of outputs submitted in the flexible distance learning, the teacher can implement own techniques in ensuring the integrity of graded assessments. The teacher can let the students sign an integrity agreement or the Pledge of Honesty, non-disclosure agreements, self-ratings with justifications, to build responsibility and trusting relationships between the student and the teacher. Okay. So this one, no? how do we keep the integrity of assessment data? For example, the issue is test is prone to cheating. Though the possible solutions, revisiting of the school manual regarding rules on cheating and its consequences and updating to include behavior in online assessment. Design well your test with clearly articulated purpose. Assess high-level thinking skills so answers are not easily found in books or in internet sources or assess even with the books open. Shuffle items and choices so that students take different forms of the test. Time the administration of the test so students will not have time to Google answers or consult books. Let students take the test with their camera on. Disable access to browsers and applications. Sign an honesty form where students commit that that the answers came from them without relying on others and with knowledge of consequences when caught dishonest and attested by parents if possible. And sign a non-disclosure agreement to be signed by the students and attested by the parents to minimize the spreading of the tool. Okay? Another area of concern regarding originality of written ideas. Issue written works may just be copied. Possible solutions do a plagiarism test like Turnitin which we are all using in PNU, with known acceptable originality index, requires citation of sources and list of references, 
set oral presentations to defend virtually written outputs, and sign an honesty form where students commit what the, that the ideas are original without relying on others and with knowledge of consequences when caught counterfeit signed by parents if possible. Another area of concern is the authenticity of the products of learning. The issue is the doer of work may not be the learner being assessed. The possible solutions set a clear rubric to allow evaluation, not only of the product, but also the process of learning. Show proof of the process in doing the product. Set oral presentations to defend virtually the product of learning. Do self, peer, and parent evaluation to support teachers' evaluation and sign an honesty form where students commit that the product was made by them without relying on others and with knowledge of consequences when caught fake, signed by parents if possible. Okay, and uh, they, uh, they ended or they concluded their pres this uh, presentation with a quote from Marilyn Balagtas, be remembered by your students for being instrumental to their success and not to their failure. Teach them well and assess them accurately so they will thank you for it. And during the clustered workshop, no, we were asked uh, to identify or have the or we were asked not to have this identification of essential intended learning outcomes. Okay, um, identified weeks one to eight intended learning outcomes, course contents, high essential, moderately essential, or least essential. Okay, content that I am more knowledgeable and content I need to know more about. And another um, activity you know, during the clustered um, workshop, you know, we were asked okay, to complete this migration e-learning course plan template. Okay? So this will be per week. Okay? So under uh, the intended learning outcomes, you know, there's, these are the essential POs and CILOs based on your syllabus. Okay? And then we were asked to have this uh, to write the course contents depending on the subjects or the course. Okay. And so under the flexible learning instructional deliveries and strategies, uh, synchronous online. So what activity or strategy will you do in a live or real-time interaction with your students? How long will you conduct this? For a three-hour course per week, 30 minutes to one hour lecture. Okay. So examples will be doing live online discussion, video conferencing via MS Teams, Google Meet, FB Messenger, and responding to live chat conversations, doing live demonstration of a ski laboratory experiment, discussion of a topic, live group presentation of an assigned case analysis or situation, doing a problem-solving lecture, discussion in math, physics, chemistry, okay? Through LMS, SOCMED platforms, MOOC, webinars, TED Talks, Transcript of online viewing tasks must be made available for students on full offline context. Okay, and uh, for students, okay, who opted for asynchronous or online, okay, so what activity or strategy you will do with a time delay and not in real time? How long will you conduct this? For example, posting a task via email or MS Teams, accomplishing a group discussion, and submission of output. Out Put via email, article reading, giving reflection using a worksheet, watching demonstration video and providing feedback, pre-recorded video of lecture topic provided with task activities. And under the e-learning offline, so what activity or strategy you will do with an offline learning package resource. Okay, this will be for students who are not connected to the internet. Okay, the examples will be modules, activity sheets, Learning materials stored in a hard drive, CD, or DVD. Recording of individual videos of a related task demonstration activity. Developing documents, spreadsheet, presentation file outputs. Okay? And for the remote offline modular, so what activity or strategy you will do in a printed modular-based learning delivery. Okay? So examples, module-based printed materials, specific copy of scan. Digitized materials attached to the module, worksheet, activity sheets, and learning toolkits. Okay? And for the assessment, how will you assess your students? What assessment methods or tools will you use to evaluate or assess? So examples of assessment tools, multiple choice, or you may use Google Forms, Microsoft Forms, through or false, essays, reflection, 
short answer text, journaling, blogging, online platforms, how to assess, using rubrics, paper and pencil, online tools generated. Okay? So what type of assessment can be formative or summative, performance, product, project, portfolio, authentic assessment. And for the learning resources, what materials are learning ma resources, online resources, open educational resources will you include or use? For my synthesis and insights, for the second part of my presentation, I realized that we have to uphold the integrity of our assessments. Since our college department is offering a bachelor's degree in religious education, major in values education, our school leaders, educators, and students must embody the values of honesty and integrity. I am grateful that Chad reminded us of this and even gave us practical tips. As educators and educational leaders, we are the first ones who must embody these values. At the same time, we open all channels of communication with our students, especially during this pandemic, and be well prepared informing these young people who will be the future leaders of our country. Thank you so much for listening and God bless.